Okay, um, today I will talk about an application of object detection and semantic segmentation in structure formation mapping of historic mining sites, so many words in the title. Um, I'm working in a interdisciplinary <coughs> research project um, of the mining heritage on the Hartz Mountains, and we are four people working part-time. Our archaeologist um, works for the state office. Then we have one historian working at the museum, which is one object of interest. And um, we are two people at the Institute of Mine Surveying of the Technical University in Klaustal. So what are our project tasks um, at the Technical University? First, um, the 3D reconstruction of parts of the historic mining system of Amitsberg. So that's the data set I will show you later as an example. Um, there are two other tasks which uh, are not relevant for this talk, but we have to reconstruct uh, small-scale educational mining machinery models and um, some GIS analysis and so on. So um, the object of interest is um, the mine of Rommelsberg, uh, which dates back to 1150 in some parts and was in operation until 1980s. So here you see a mine plan from 1913, which is not the full extent. It grew even larger and faster in the later years and was converted to a museum in 1990. So the lower levels are all flooded and not accessible, but that's not a problem for us because we are just concentrating on these um, upper left part with a red rectangle, which dates back for 700 years. And this is um, the part we have reconstructed in 3D. So uh, what were we using as a method? Um, we used a structure for motion underground with a, a DSLR camera and several flash units and uh, sometimes a GoPro on a long stick for parts we didn't want to crawl into. And we used terrestrial measurements using a total station or a Leica 3D distro for small confined spaces as well to get reference measurements and something to compare our structure for motion data to if we um, still in the right direction and scale. So the results um, from last year um, are this 3D reconstruction. We are still in the phase of dense matching and creating 3D models in high resolution, but this is um, the sparse point cloud you see. There are several hundred meter of tunnels and some water wheel chambers. We used Photoscan Pro, MeshLab Cloud Compare and Leica Geo Office and well, now we have um, 40,000 images of this mine with position in 3D and about 200 measured target points from 50 surveyed uh, station points. Um, so now we come into the real topic today, um, the application of object detection and semantic segmentation. Here is an image of one water wheel <laughs> chamber. This chamber is about 10 meters long, 5 meters high and wide. And on this face wall are several objects of interest. Um, there are these metal bolting plates, uh, which are a modern addition, but we use it as a te te um, test example for our object detection. Um, there are sometimes boreholes from black powder blasting, which are more of interest for archaeologists, and there are tool marks. So, um, um, the archaeologists um, wanted to have a look at this face wall and um, detect tool marks and some cavities where wooden constructions have been in former years to get an idea of what these room was used for during several periods. And to, to help it, we just played around as a side project with object detection. So um, the software I used in this case was TensorBox because I used it three years ago in another project and had a training data set um, already available. So I had at hand about 100 resized uh, scaled images from different mines, or mines, salt mines, whatever, with um, annotated bolting plates and used this as a training data set and just applied, the applied this trained network on our new data set from this Amelsberg mine. Um, this is one output of the object detection. So I used it as a black box. It's just a pre-trained network. And I adapted it with my training data set. And the output are these uh, bounding boxes of detected <coughs> objects. And it worked quite well first. But if you look closely, you see some false positives. In this case, um, this are our photogrammetric target targets. <coughs> um, these um, well, cards are quite similar to these um, bolting plates because they are rectangular and have a 
pointy thing in the middle say we should uh, adapt our training data set and put them into as a negative example where no boundary box should be detected <coughs> with this iteration look at, at your data where it doesn't work adapt your training data set and we have some undetected objects um, which are not that big of a problem because we have many images of the same part and if it's not detected in one image it's probably detected in the next so until now you have <laughs> just 2d bounding boxes in the images but we want to get the um, 3d information so it's a simple fast approach we um, took these bounding boxes and called the images green at that point and used it as a text frame for the scan projected and back and you get something like on the right side, like a heat map, um, which is more green if all images of this part agree, yes, there's a bounding box. So it's really fast to, to apply without any complicated tools. And you see a visual representation of the spatial distribution of these objects. So uh, we, we use <coughs> the second simple approach to get uh, 3D feature classes of these detected objects um, and we just relied on the bundle file you get from the, this structure for motion. So you can export a bundle file in Photoscan or get it from Visual SFN and so on where you have the 3D points and all 2D projections in the underlying images. And we just searched in the bounding boxes um, where the next 2D point used directly this 3D coordinate to, to create a feature class and merged uh, close lying points to, to get our 3D features. So um, the more correct approach uh, wasn't implemented um, because it's a side project and we hadn't that much time. You could of course project these bounding boxes onto a mesh and get uh, real coordinates of these corners. So. Um, that's the object detection part. Here you see one part of the model um, consisting of 20,000 images with this um, yeah, green heat map texture applied. And there are some spots at these chambers where you see, okay, there are many bolting plates and some bolting plates on, in, in the tunnels and some false detections as well. But it worked quite nice and we, uh, yeah, at least could use this as a tool for the real objects of interest. So the next step here would be to create a training data set of our boreholes and probably tool marks and adapt it. Um, we train a network to, to detect these in 3D. Um, yeah, the next part of my talk is about uh, semantic segmentation, so pixel-wise labeling. Um, and um, the inspiration came from our ecologist who said, okay, this is a nice uh, face wall in this chamber, but I don't like these uh, wire meshes. They obstruct the surface. Could we just remove them somehow? Well, yeah, <laughs> we, we can try. So um, here you see an image. Um, this is a stone of the face wall and these folding plates, a nice smiling uh, photogrammetric target and these wire meshes. So um, if you remove these um, wires in the image, you see just the face and probably you could see more. Um, so how to detect this? Um, we first tested a simple geometric approach. Um, use the point cloud, create an averaging mesh, which probably lies between these wires and the stones and filter it out and it works, but just in areas where there is a mesh and um, in all other area areas it um, yeah, cut off the stones. So we had to uh, segment our images uh, into mesh parts and non-mesh parts. So why not directly classify each um, pixel, which is a wire? So we used semantic segmentation, took some inspiration from this UNET paper uh, of biomedical image segmentation they used pixel-wise labeling of cell borders and these um, in, in microscopic image and these cell borders had quite an organic structure like our meshes and um, they had the same problem they're just a very small training set because it's a tedious process to manually label all these images so um, we had to label as well some I images um, we had 10 labeled images so they are about um, 10 megapixel images and 10 of these images are labeled by hand. You see a labeling on the right side. Ask my colleagues why we got not more data, but we have to, to make some data augmentation to really train our network on, on that. And um, <coughs> for that we um, extracted several patches of the input side of 
size of the neural network. So it has an input size of 500 times 500 pixels, and we have this 10 or 20 megapixel images, so we could extract many patches at many different resolutions and rotate these patches. What we could, as well as in this biomedical images, um, distort the images <coughs> without uh, creating problems for this specific data set. So here you <coughs> see a patch of, of this wire mesh, and you see some random distortions of this image which were used for training because it's still valid in, in this case. And we trained our network in two or three days on, on a computer and came back, looked at the results. Okay, we have to put more negative data into where, where um, the image is just labeled black because there's defi oh, definitely no wire mesh. And um, we trained it again and you see here an original image and here the um, predicted labeling on this image. And another example, um, this is the orig original image. This is um, the labeling which uh, got out of the trained network. And here you see in one water wheel chamber <coughs> as a texture 3D model and the same model with um, the 1,500 predicted images as a texture. So if my archaeologist um, would be interested in this wire meshes, he probably would be very glad to, to have this because he could see um, where the wire mesh lies on the model, but um, well, unfortunately he isn't. He wants to get rid of it. So we used um, this predicted images as a mask in photo scan, you can import masks to exclude uh, parts of the images in the spectral motion processing and dense matching. So we uh, took all these 1,500 image mask images into photo scan and processed the dense matching um, using this mask. So here you see an original image of, of this in this data set. This is um, the mask image as you see it in photo scan if you import the mask. And this is a generated depth map in the dense matching um, where some parts are left out and the resulting 3D point cloud without mesh parts, wire mesh parts. It's not a perfect result. We have still some errors from <coughs> shadows of the wires and um, some problems in the dense matching. So it's not the perfect uh, unobstructed surface we wanted to have, but at least it is a start. Here's a textured mesh um, of this part without the wires. So if you go back, this is an original image, and this is somehow an idea how it would look without this wire parts. So um, thank you for your attention.